Hi there, my name is Andy Talbot. This is my bus, Bodie. Uh, we're here on the edge of the Pacific Rim on the West Coast. It's a 1990 Chevy Van 30 Thomas School Bus. He's about 17 feet long with about 145,000 kilometers on him, getting about 7.5 miles to the gallon. So this is his final resting place. Here we have the super simple but really efficient surfboard rack for every board size that you want. You can kind of adjust it and make a new hole for every board. So you got a custom fit and it's secure and it's safe. And it didn't even really rattle that much. So yeah, it was a really simple, cool design. I think out of anything that I built, I have the most people ask me about how I built this. So I definitely in the future, I want to do like a little instruction kind of video with all the dimensions and stuff to uh, help people make their own as well. Coming around the back, built like a little frame and then put some live edge wood, make it a bit easier to get in the back because I really do use the back door almost as much as the front door. This is kind of what I go fill up at the river and get drinking water from. And then I cart it up top and that's what gives me about 130 liters of water storage. Well, I've got four 12 foot long, four inch PVC pipes that run underneath the deck and I paint in the black to sort of help with absorbing heat. The idea was to be able to have like warm showers and stuff on the road. But because I'm living more permanently now, I kind of built a shower platform over to my left there and didn't need the shower off the back here. So I took that and just like rerouted it underneath inside into the top. Usually to like do dishes and stuff for a couple weeks before I have to fill up. For now it's doing the job, so yeah. Chalkboard up top to write random beautiful message for people when you're driving. We got like a lot of feedback uh, driving down the highways with stuff up there. I got the $30 ladder that I found at a salvage yard that's been uh, holding up really well actually, yeah. Storage locker slash place for surfboards. The whole bottom is built with aluminum mesh so you can throw your wetsuits and stuff in there and it'll just drain as you're driving. That was kind of the idea. So this was also built to house like a solar panel. I used to have like a 250 watt that would go right there. I decided to move them off and put them down in the forest um, in a better spot where it's getting more sun right now. Running just over 700 watts uh, in two panels that I have down there, and that's plenty for, for all my needs right now. This is the deck that probably took me a couple of weeks to make. I built an aluminum frame out of salvaged materials from a scrap metal place. We can pop a couple higher pieces of aluminum here to actually give like a nice like shade cover from the sun as well when you're traveling through the desert. All these pieces take apart and they put in the back storage and then underneath the deck as well, they slide through there chose all these pieces from the mill of Live Edge and interlocked them all the way across. Broken in places, so I'm probably gonna redo the deck within the next year. And for the paint job, because I was heading the desert, I definitely wanna make sure that it was the most reflective, so I chose like silver and the white, which uh, did a really good job of keeping the heat out. Yeah, that's about it for the outside. Let's uh, cruise on inside and check it out. This video is sponsored by Parks Project. To date, Parks Project has contributed over $2.5 million to funding projects that restore habitats in parklands. Give the gift of parks with the 25% off site-wide sale ending on the 29th of November at 11.59 p.m. PST. Click the link in the description and shop the biggest sale of the year with code GIFTPARKS. And remember to subscribe. It all started um, about four years ago. I was just like in a really dark, difficult time in my life. I just broken up with my ex-girlfriend, so I was coming from a place of deep loneliness and deep sadness. At the time, I was living in Tofino. A good friend of mine showed up in a bus that he just started converting, and, and that definitely planted the seed. When I bought it, I didn't really have that many plans. I kind of just like decided to kind of like make it up as I went along and tried to create a space that was just like inviting, so I could just meet as many people as possible on the road and, and connect with people. So that's why I chose the layout of like the the jackknife bed that comes out, the small kitchen. I think the whole build in the end cost me about eight and a half thousand dollars. That's including the bus. Everything was 90% salvage from people's properties, from mills, from friends, from beaches. Ended up building a really good relationship with a guy to cedar mill. So all this cedar I got for, for free, I just traded artwork for it. I tried as much as I could to upcycle stuff and trade stuff and not really spend much. So it really helped with the build and with my budget. When I first started building, it was like mid-January. It was like snowing and I did all my work outside. I didn't have any heaters or anything. Just bundled up every day. One month straight working like 14 to 15 hour days, seven days a week. I didn't talk to anyone. Sometimes you kind of need something in life to go channel all that energy into. I used the bus as a, a means to sort of like work through all those difficult feelings. So it was a beautiful journey in that sense, yeah. All right, so this is probably the cutest of the tiny wood stoves that you can buy on, on the market. They're called Cubic Minis, and this is the cup model. For this size space, like I wouldn't recommend anything bigger. I can basically cut enough firewood in a day for the entire winter. I'd really recommend getting the flu system that comes with it because it's double walled and yeah, it definitely helps the airflow. Added all these little river stones in the bottom. You can get this like bonding white stuff that you can just put on the ground for uh, like pavers and and doing like grouting and stuff like that. But I never actually finished the grouting because I think I might just redo it all now. So I was kind of waiting. It's definitely not light, but because the bus doesn't go anywhere in the future, I can kind of throw another 100 pounds of rocks in. No big deal. I created storage all up in here and you can kind of push stuff back in those 
spots too. I cut this open. I made more storage on the side here. This is all the electrical that I ripped out for the lights and stuff. Um, and that really definitely helps a lot. Diesel heater down here. I can just like pop this in. Fill the space up really fast. I got one of the Amazon Chinese ones and so far I've been using it for like a year and haven't had any issues. The one thing I don't like is the ticking from the fuel pump. So another option is I think I might actually install it under the bus and then run a longer hose up in the future. This is like one of the areas where I spent the most time. I really wanted to have a library included in the bus build because I really enjoy reading. A lot of really good healing books that have helped me a lot. It'd be nice to have a place where I can kind of like share books and like when people come we can trade books. I'd say the biggest thing that took me the longest was like creating this lamp here. It took me a few days to kind of find the perfect spot for it but once I found that I drilled out all the little holes. It's Arbutus or he kind of has all these like cool funky little gnarly holes and I drilled them out and I put fairy lights in the back and then I put little crystals and pieces of beach glass the things people kind of gifted me and donated to me and this space was like a little reading nook where people could kind of sit and pick up a book and hang out. Beneath this is the main storage area of the bus. In the future I think I'd probably design it so it can pull out because it's kind of annoying to have to lift that up every time. Below here is where I have my battery bank. Um, it's just like a big Telcel battery. It weighs like 125 pounds. I think it's like 133 amp hours. And this is really cool. This is a hat rack that I made from a really big elk antler that I got when I was tree planting. All my lights are pot lights that are all hidden up inside the panels up here. And their LED is super efficient, nice warm light. More down here on the side and then more here on the side. And I pretty much just use the sides. I never really even need this unless I'm yeah, doing an art project or something. This kitchen zone here, so I got one of these stoves on Amazon and it's been working great. I've been really, really happy with it. I ended up taking this thing off because I'm parked all the time now, so I don't fully need that, but ordinarily you can kind of just pop it up and then it kind of creates a extend countertop space um, when you're traveling, which is good if you're limited on space. Got this piece of cedar here for free. I just dug it out of one of the burn piles and epoxied it and polyurethaned it. And it's actually been holding up really nice considering it's cedar, which is like one of the, one of the softest woods. This one here is just more storage for all my spices, like teas and stuff like that. With like a funky piece of driftwood in there that I added, so. This is like my switch to my inverter. So if I need to like charge any AC stuff, I just flip that on. And then on the side here, I've got all my 12 volt stuff hooked up to different switches so I can just hit a switch and things turn on. Diesel heater or my lights. Um, I got this bowl here from a local woodworker in my hometown. And this was like a salad bowl that I just like ended up like I was busking music outside the mall and he was selling inside and I just like went in, took all my busking money and just traded it for the bowl. So that was kind of a cool thing, music for wood. And then just like drilled a hole in the bottom. Simple little 12 volt pump in the back there. It uh, pumps the water from the top roof into it. Um, and this is my water filter. Got a Berkey there, great. Just like a charcoal filter for just my drinking water. And then this is a kind of a cool zone because I just wanted to really maximize every single inch in here. So I've got all my jars in the back for like a little pantry on the sides here. Got my knives, got my cutting board, little efficient 12 volt fridge. And then yeah, all my pots and pans down here. So even got a soda stream kind of going on back there. This is a, uh, Kind of like a pantry, using it a lot for grains and other stuff right now, but when I was on the road, I was like, I, I really love tea and making tea for people, so it's just, uh, I feel like there's no, no better way to connect with strangers than sharing a warm cup of tea. The reason I chose the ledges was to like just really keep the space open. I didn't want to close off anything. I wanted to keep the, like all the light from the windows. It shows a bit of clutter, but at the same time, it's nice having the open areas where you can kind of just throw stuff um, and it doesn't impact your headspace or actual living space. This is the, the bedroom slash um, living room. I designed it so the plywood's got two sheets with a hinge and the whole thing just folds up this way and then the back of the couch actually becomes the leg. And then my friend, who's a seamstress, she helped me design all the upholstery for the all the cushions in here and it's pretty cool it took me like a few days to figure out a plan so that both couches fit into a full-size bed when I put all the different pieces together so it's kind of like a puzzle and I've got velcro that kind of all hold them together and they sit next to each other I found this one this one and this one at the thrift store all next to each other and like they all match each other perfectly and so that decided the colors for the whole bus it was like just instant for like 10 bucks or something you gotta love it when that happens 
It's pretty full right now, but this is where I keep all my clothing. Got it on some nice, strong rollers in there. Got another really cool little storage spot down here where I keep all my blankets for my bed. And that's the wheel well, so I just like, you know, even the wheel well, I just wanted to make sure I didn't waste an inch of storage space. Definitely the heart of the bus right here. Um, I got the table at a friend's place. It was just uh, rotten away in his backyard, and he gave it to me. It was really thick, so I made like a router jig, and then the router jig took off all the excess material. Found all these things that I collected from all over the world, and then friends gifted me the different pieces as well. It kind of just ended up being like a beautiful time capsule and a beautiful memory of all the little things that I've collected. And I wanted to have like a lot of like ocean west coast elements, like a, like a west coast tidal pool. So I have a Chinese float, starfish, sea urchin, a whole bunch of like shells and stuff. I mean, the bodhicitta is like your inner most vulnerable, kind of most beautiful part of yourself. And then the bodhicitta is the heart mind. Yeah, I was coming from a place of deep suffering and, and deep loneliness and, and deep pain. So I wanted sort of like the bus to create like a, an open loving space where I could invite a better part of myself, uh, connect with myself on a deeper level, and then connect with everyone in the world and like remind myself that like the world is beautiful and that 99% of the people out there are beautiful. And we get in these like deep dark places, but came there to show us that there is something better out there. And by building this, I hope to sort of connect with the world and, and heal myself. Driving down the stars rising over Picking sage out, traveling for days. Mine's been working in an unusual way. Got everything that I need. Sitting here under my body tree. Strumming chords in her southern sky. Singing sweet songs as the days roll. Band new story we all love national parks and nature. Think about those dreamy national park adventures, the ones that you relive over and over in your head. With Parks Project Gear and Apparel, you can really tap back into those times to commemorate and get stoked for your next adventure. Not only can you get apparel and gear that will get you excited for your next trip to a national park, but at Parks Project, they believe that we can leave parks better than we found them. So they're committed to restoring habitats through education and funding projects in the park. Park. To date, they have given over $2.5 million to Parklands. By supporting them, you join their mission to leave it better than we found it. So check out their store. They've got loads of things that would make great gifts for the holidays, whether it's their National Parks iconic enamel percolator that is made for adventuring, their shrooms Polaroid camera to capture those dreamy moments in nature. They've also got books and apparel. Check the link in the description and feel good because Parks Project is contributing to funding projects that restore habitats and parklands by supporting them you support their mission to leave it better than we found it give the gift of parks with the 25 percent off site-wide sale that ends on the 29th of november at 11 59 p.m pst don't miss out click the link in the description now and shop the biggest sale of the year with code gift parks